Now let's talk about some long-term advantages of this product. So let's look at some things that are, that are universal across this product. So we've looked inside and we've seen a lot of these components already. If you pulled this quick connect too many times and broke the wiring harness here on the back, you may have to replace the HMI. So the display, the HMI is the same across the entire product range of the indoor products. It's going to be the same HMI, the same display. The fan is going to be the same. So if you have a component that needs to be replaced, if a fan breaks, there's not a specific fan for a model. It's the same across the entire range of products. The thermistors, again, same across the entire range of products. And something that's very, very interesting and you might find a little unusual, the ECU, the control unit up here, the board, same across the entire range. So if a house takes a lightning surge or something like that and a board gets fried, board's fried, you don't need a board specific for your unit. The replacement boards is ordered from Bosch, will go into any unit, and then you select the capabilities off of that board that you want it to be able to do. 160,000 BTUs, 199,000 BTUs, different capabilities that you want. Very, very favorable from a distributor standpoint. They have one board replaces for any of the boards. From a contractor standpoint, if you have enough units in the field that you might like to have one in your shop, you only need one for the entire range of the seven products on those boards, which is very, very reliable. Electrode sets are the same across the entire range, 160 or 199,000 BTUs. So if you lose an igniter and you have to replace the igniter, it, across the board. Now I have to tell you one thing, the individual electrodes are not replaceable, it replaces as an entire electrode set. It doesn't replace individual electrodes, it's the entire set. Heat exchanger, 160,000 BTU heat exchanger is 160,000 BTU heat exchanger. 199,000 BTU condensing heat exchanger, 160,000 BTU condensing heat exchanger, they're going to be the same across the entire range. So I don't have a great diagram for it, but I do want to talk a little bit now about this condensing heat exchanger and what exactly it does and how it is extremely unique in the, in the sense of a condensing heat exchanger. Pretty straightforward what's happening in the combustion chamber. We're making a total of six passes, two layers of three passes each. Again, with those turbulators that are driving down the chance for scale and giving us more even heating of the water. Something very unique happens down here in the condensing heat exchanger. And again, we're counterflowing the water. The cold water comes in the bottom hot exhaust gases are coming down. As the water moves through the condensing section, there's not fins in the condensing section. There's three passes, and each pass is comprised of or composed of 50 small tubes. Many of you, when I say 50 small tubes, are immediately going to think that a small tube is going to create a high head pressure loss or something like that. But what happens is the cross-sectional area, the aggregate of that entire cross-sectional area, is actually superior to the cross-sectional area of the copper tubing. So what does that tell us? We're moving the same gallons per minute through that condensing heat exchanger, but the water flow is actually slower. Gallons per minute remains the same, but the velocity of the water goes down. So as the velocity of the water goes down, our contact time goes up. Greater contact time means more opportunity to extract energy to condense that water vapor to extract back that latent heat of vaporization and extract as much as possible all of the actual sensible heat from the combustion process. So the water enters and as it enters the left hand side it actually enters into a bay or an open header where it gets picked up by those 50 tubes, moved from the left hand side over to the right hand side. Then there's another header or a bay which actually covers the bottom pass and the middle pass so water reverses direction. We take that water then from the right hand side back to the left hand side. We replicate that again, but now this header or this bay covers the middle pass and the top pass. And keep in mind when I say pass, each pass is actually that 50 small tubes, that bank of 50 small tubes. The water then moves from the left hand side to the right hand side, where it then transitions back to copper to flow through the heat exchanger. So that's kind of the process of how we're moving that energy. We're, we're ensuring our greatest possible temperature differential delta T between the water and the exhaust by counterflowing the cold water hitting the coolest exhaust gases, creating a huge surface area with those 50 small tubes. So the wetted surface area is huge. And then that huge wetted surface area, we actually are increasing the contact time by slowing the velocity of the water moving through that heat exchanger creating that very, very effective energy transfer. And in order to really demonstrate that energy transfer for you, I have to go back to my HMI and show you what OptiFlow does as far as for energy transfer. 
Let's go back where we can really demonstrate how efficient, thermally efficient, hopefully you understand how I have discussed the combustion efficiency, but let me show you how really thermally efficient this unit is. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take you back to our P4 information. Hit the back arrow there and hit OK again. And I don't want data history, I want operational data, and I'm going to hit OK again. So we've got this unit converted, we've got, we've got it auto-tuned or combustion adjusted. Now let's get some water flowing through it. Again, these are our water NTCs. What is the temperature of the water moving through the unit? And right now we see an inlet of about 62. That's going to drop down. The water's fairly warm in this lab space, so it's going to drop down a little bit. as we see that dropping down. Now let's take a look at something else that's very interesting. If we scroll down now, again, we see this is at 63 degrees is the inlet of the water, the temperature of the water coming in. And then look at the exhaust, only 75 degrees. Our exhaust is only 16 degrees warmer than the water coming into the unit. That's how, uh, clearly you can see the thermal efficiency that this unit is capable of achieving. And this is all at a flow rate of three and a half gallons per minute. Only about 80% of power, so we're not even at full fire, moving at about three and a half gallons per minute. And again, 55 degree water coming in, Stack temperature 74 degrees, 19, uh, 73 degrees, 18 degrees above that incoming water temperature. So that's all the heat. That's all the heat energy that we're leaving behind. So as we talk about combustion efficiency and thermal efficiency, this unit is an incredible product. And Bosch was very proud of what we're able to achieve with this unit, uh, both from a comfort standpoint, from a convenience standpoint for the contractor with our top connections, to the consumer with our stable outlet temperatures, to the distributor with the ability to not have to stock an LP unit as well as a natural gas unit. He's only going to stock one unit. And then in, again, environmentally with the fact that we're putting out as minimum emissions as we can possibly put out with this unit. I really thank everyone for joining us. I hope this has proven to be some useful information as we've discussed this product. Uh, the last thing that we can really talk about is in the form of serviceability, and the primary thing that we talk about with serviceability is descaling. We kind of touched on that a little bit with the service ports down here, but in order to descale a unit, it's going to be just as simple as a bucket with a couple gallons of white vinegar, a small transfer pump, and then typically washing machine connectors. Again, it's garden hose threads down here, and your pump's probably got garden hose thread on it anyway, so that little transfer pump, we're just gonna pump white vinegar through the unit, always in the direction of flow. We're gonna unplug the unit, we're gonna power it down, shut the gas off. We're gonna pump the white vinegar through the unit, white vinegar is gonna come back out, dump into the bucket via the other uh, washing machine connector, circulate that and anywhere from 30 minutes to uh, maybe at most an hour, and that's going to drive any scale that happens to form inside of that unit. It's going to get rid of that scale for us. And that's really the primary long-term service thing that we're going to see on this product. Of course, there are things like the annual inspection of the combustion chamber. You want to observe the flame. You want to make sure that your exhaust is clear. You want to make sure that your intake is clear. There are a lot of those annual type things that you really want to look at on the product, but as far as for a long-term service thing, that's really going to be it is, is that scale formation. And then in order to analyze for scale formation, that is one of the reasons why we have that NTC looking at the exhaust temperature leaving the combustion chamber. As scale builds up, that exhaust temperature is going to rise, and that's going to be our signal that we need to descale the unit. We will still remove most of the sensible heat, and we'll still have a low stack temperature, but the temperature at the interface between the combustion chamber and the condensing heat exchanger will be a higher temperature, and that's kind of the indicator there. So this unit, again, running at about 80%. Uh, it is very, very quiet. I, I don't I imagine that you really can't even hear the, the operation of the unit, uh, even with a microphone very, very close. So again, really appreciate everybody joining us. Hopefully you found this to be some useful information, and hopefully we get to do an in-person class with you sometime really soon.